In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was void and formless. And then God said, let there be electromagnetic radiation. Well, kind of. Electromagnetic radiation lies across a sort of cosmic ruler called the electromagnetic spectrum, laid out from low energy to high. At the low frequency end, we have things such as radio waves and TV waves and microwaves. And then traveling down the spectrum towards the high frequency end, we have things such as uh, gamma rays and x-rays. And then near the middle, filling this little sliver of spectrum real estate, lies what is responsible for all of which you have ever seen. Visible light, being fundamentally the same as everything else on the spectrum, is a range of electromagnetic radiation frequencies that fit in right between infrared and ultraviolet. At the gentle end, we have red, and yes, that's why photography dark rooms and car taillights are always this color. And then, as energy increases, we travel across all colors of the rainbow, ending in violet, all of which are contained within a beam of pure white light. And we can thank our friend Sir Isaac Newton for that little discovery. Albert Munsell, however, was the first to officially identify the three dimensions of color, hue, value, and chroma. Hue determines which color, value determines the brightness, and chroma determines the saturation. And for those of you who are still wondering, black is actually not a color, it's a value. Black is also thought of as being the absence of all colors, but it's also the mix of all colors, but that's really just an additive versus subtractive color mixing conversation, and we just don't really need to get into that right now. Our good friend Isaac was also kind enough to take the color band and wrap it into what we refer to as the color wheel. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe then conveniently chopped it up into three primary and three secondary colors, and this is what color harmonies are based off of. At its most basic, we have complementary, which are colors that appear opposite each other on the color wheel. Bringing in more colors, we have ones such as split complementary, triadic, tetradic, analogous, and so forth. So yes, you can actually prove how and which colors go together. As light enters the eye, it hits the retina. And within the retina, we find the most valuable square millimeter of tissue on the human body, the fovea. Deep within the fovea lie six million cone cells which are responsible for one's color perception. The human eye contains three types of cones, each responding most strongly to either red, green, or blue. The brain interprets this mix of colors, and thus the path of color is complete. However, in a very small percentage of women, a fourth type of cone exists somewhere in between red and green, and enables a higher increase of color differentiation, sort of creating a super color seeing mutant for me, my name is Lux Davis, the world's only known non-female tetrachromat.